Panasonic EVA1 EVA1 is a variable frame rate camcorder. So you can record at the standard frame rates of, you know, 24 frames per second or 30 or 59.94 or for European territories 25 or 50. That that's it's got all of that in there. But it also can control the individual frame. You can record at one frame per second or seven frames per second or 28 frames per second or pretty much whatever you want to do, one frame increments from one to 240 frames per second. It's really powerful. You can do tremendous, wonderful slow motion. I mean, 240 frames per second, when played back on a 24 frame timeline, that's 10 to one slow motion. That's really exquisite, super slow motion. There are a few things to know about it, so I'm gonna show you and, and describe a few of the ways that you get into variable frame rates and what you have to consider when you wanna record variable frame rates. For example, the first thing we need to know is how fast you wanna go because there are three modes that the sensor uses to scan to give you these variable frame rates. In one to 60 frames per second, it is the full high quality 5.7K 18 megapixel image. So if you're doing variable frame rates from one to 60, you can get the absolute pristine pure quality. If you wanna go faster than 60 frames per second, we need to change the sensor mode the camera is operating in. So going to the system settings menu, system mode and sensor mode, and you see there's S35 5.7K. That'll give you one to 60 frames per second in pure, pristine, high quality. Then we have S35 Mix 2.8K. This will take us from one to 120 frames per second. The resolution is lowered in order to be able to get the camera to scan even faster. So the mix mode takes a block of four pixels and mixes it into one big large pixel. So the result is we have the same field of view, but instead of being a, you know, a 4K sensor, now it's a 2.8K sensor. So this would be great quality if you're doing a 1080p or a 2K image. If you're doing a 4K image, it's gonna get a little bit softer. It's not gonna be quite as sharp, but it's gonna be twice as fast frame rates up to 120 frames per second. If you need to go beyond 120, then you can put it in 4.3 Crop and Mix 2.2K. That's a long name. The general gist here is it uses the same mixing technology, but instead of using the full width of the sensor, it crops down a little bit to a size that is basically 4 thirds. So you'll have a slightly tighter field of view. It'll look like, you know, if you had a 25 millimeter lens on there, it'll look like you actually have a 35 millimeter lens because it's gonna crop in that much. But now the sensor is reading out really, really fast and can go up to a full 240 frames per second. The quality will be suitable for a 1080p production. It, to mix it into a 4K production, it's, it's going to be pretty soft because it's only 2.2K resolution. So you have to determine if the speed difference of going to 240 frames per second is worth the resolution drop that you may encounter if you're doing a 4K production. But in 2K or a 1080p production, it should mix in very well. So how do you enable and access these variable frame rates? Pretty easy. Go into the menus, go into camera settings. And the first menu there is FPS for frames per second. And the first item, the VFR switch on or off. We can enable variable frame rates here, or you can disable. Why would you want them disabled? Well, because if you're shooting normal footage, you don't want to accidentally go into a variable frame rate, then all your playback will be in slow motion or fast motion or something like that. But a second bigger reason is when it's recording variable frame rates, there will be no audio recorded. So if you're recording at the system frequency, 24 frames per second at a 24 frame per second speed, you'll get audio. But if you're recording a 24 frame per second frequency and you're recording at 33 frames per second, no audio, they have to match. So you wouldn't want to accidentally change into this because your audio might go away. So they make it a two-step process. You have to enable variable frame rates and then you have to select your frame rate. So we go into the variable frame rate switch, turn that to on, then you can go into value and it says system frequency. That's the first in the list. What that means is it's going to be able to record audio. It's going to look normal. If you set your system frequency to 24 frames per second, then this choice will be 24 frames per second. If you set it at 50, then this will be 50. Or you can scroll up and down through a list of variable frame rates, and that list will be as long as your sensor mode will allow. So if you're in S35 5.7K mode, 
then you'll see the list goes up to 60 frames per second. If you're in the 2.8K mode, it'll go up to 120. If you're in the 4.3 crop and mix 2.2K, it'll go up to 240 frames per second. So here's a number of frame rates that you can choose and you can add or delete from that list too. The list starts out with some pre-programmed values that is a reasonable selection, but you could go in there and add your own unique one if you needed three frames per second. You just go to the add menu and put in the number and add it to the list. And if you know for a fact you're never ever ever gonna record at 42, then you can go out and remove that from the list. So you maintain a list of variable frame rates. So that's how you get at it, that's how you change it, but that's the hard way. The easy way, go to the home screen. Home screen is so simple to do. On the upper left, there's an icon there that says 23.98, because I'm currently in 23.98 frame mode. Touch that icon, and it brings up two items. You can scroll with the wheel, you can turn the switch on and off from here, and you can choose the exact frame rate you want from here. A third way you can do it, you can set the user toggle switch down here to be variable frame rate. So you go into the menus, into the user switches, and change user toggle to be frame rates. Then you can change the frame rate with the wheel. Not during a shot, you can't change frame rate during recording, but right before you start recording, you can just dial in exactly what frame rate you want, and then press record. That's how you access and program the variable frame rate. You can get a tremendous variety of fast motion and slow motion effects out of your EVA 1. You can even get another way to get frame rates is you can use the interval recording feature. And that'll let you do you know, one frame per second, one frame per minute, one frame every 10 minutes. If you're doing something like a building under construction or a flower opening up and you wanna do that time-lapse photography, you even have that choice too. The EVA 1 has got you covered when it comes to variable frame rates. Hope you found this helpful. And stay tuned to this channel for even more tips and tricks on how to use your EVA 1 camcorder. Panasonic.